Today, we continue our conversation about healing from childhood trauma with Harris Eddie Hill. Yet again, Harris's generosity shines through. They were nice enough to record these journaling prompts for you to allow you to connect with yourself, heal from trauma, and connect with your inner child. These words are going to help soothe you, and this journaling prompt is going to allow you to heal from trauma and deepen your self-awareness. I invite you to grab your favorite journaling modality, make yourself a delicious beverage, and let's get started. Hi, my beautiful friends. Welcome to the Danielle Shea podcast. My name is Danielle Shea, and I'm your host, and I'm a healing coach for sexual assault survivors and a lived experienced expert. That means that I'm a survivor too, and my mission is to ensure that all survivors know healing is possible. This platform, along with my coaching programs, are all designed to turn survivors into thrivers. I want you to live a joyful and fulfilled life. And if you're ready for some healing, let's dive into today's episode. Hi, hey everyone, and welcome back. My name is Harris Eddie Hill, and today I'm going to take you through a really important process that I use with my clients. I'm the founder of the Center for Childhood Trauma Healing. This is the journal prompt that is following on from the meditation or visualization that I led you through last time. If you haven't done that part, go back, otherwise this part won't make sense. So in our meditation visualization, you got to meet a younger part of you and they handed over an emotion, a feeling, an issue that they want you to take care of. And you as the adult are now in possession of that. Today's journal is going to be giving voice to that. It can be difficult sometimes to hold space for our own emotions, especially if they've been plaguing us a bit too hard, if they've been quite difficult to weather. And it's completely normal to feel that way. And it's okay if you still feel that way now. So before we journal today, I want to invite you to look at those feelings a different way. I had a patient once when I invited her to do this exercise. Her eyes nearly popped out of her head. The idea for her that she would befriend or even hear anything that her anxiety had to say was infuriating to her. And it's totally okay if you feel that way. And I want you to remember that at some point in your life, that anxiety, as exhausting and unhealthy as it can feel, That anxiety or anger or anything else of that nature became important to you. It was the only strategy that younger or little you had at the time. And I just want you to remember that as a younger version of you and your only or most effective coping strategy at that time was to overthink, to be overly aware of your environment to give up and stop trying, any of these things. Anger might have kept you safe, if that's a big one for you. Really interestingly, I always thought of myself as someone who was detached from anger. But like a lot of trauma survivors, I was actually very angry, but it was all going on in my own head. And when my anxiety was triggered... One of my coping mechanisms was to get angry about a hypothetical situation mentally. So the anger was always there. It was just shut away. And I wasn't able to integrate it as one of the many healthy and normal emotions. And similarly, we're not taught to integrate our anxiety and depression. We're taught that they are problems. And don't get me wrong, they are. And I've been there. I've I've seen the depths of it several times and so much of it is unpleasant however when we're ready we've got past the worst of that and we're ready to actually integrate that is the way through this and it's not to suggest that if you integrate with anxiety that you're accepting anxiety or that you'll always be anxious it's more that your relationship with that part of you transforms so that the anxiety becomes less and less needed If you are 
connected to the aspect of you, the part of you, the inner child, the younger version of you, whoever it is, that is anxious. And that you then have a two-way open communication with that part, the anxiety becomes much less necessary because the conversation is already there. This is not the only approach that we need to cure us of chronic anxiety or depression or any other things that we're dealing with here today. But it is a big, big part of it. So if you're not resistant to it, or even if you are, I invite you to start journaling and giving voice to that part, that emotion, to give it a voice, to tell you what it is that it needs from you. In my experience, when we connect to a younger part of us that is depressed or anxious or angry or fearful or any of those things, what we end up coming out with is often very sacred and there's often a huge usually in fact every time so far that I've done this with everyone it's always great wisdom to be received it doesn't necessarily mean that you'll do everything that this younger version of yourself wants you to do but as you journal I invite you to begin dialoguing with this aspect of you You may find it helpful to dialogue as almost as a script. So you might write me and then what you want to say and then the emotion. So anxiety, depression, fear, whoever's talking. And actually start intuitively giving voice to that part. And you can have your objections as well if you need to. What you might find. And what I actually want you to look for are the legitimate reasons that that aspect of you used the methods they have to get your attention. So, for example, I had a big bout of anxiety this year. And when I gave it voice, it said, I'm scared for our health. I was so annoyed at this anxiety because being a professional in trauma and mental health, just like anybody else, I feel uncomfortable having to deal with it afresh or in a different way. So I had a bit of resentment to it as well, even though I know and I'm very practiced at having conversations with these aspects of myself. Once I gave it space and said, you know, what is it that you're so desperately trying to say? It said to me, I'm really worried about our health. We're not doing enough to look after ourselves. And I said, that's actually valid. And I hadn't realized, what is it you need me to do? And it said, I I need you to give up these particular bad habits. And I, I need you to do it kind of now. And it really took me by surprise. But I did follow it and it did allow me to recover. It took me a couple of weeks at least to get over the initial reluctant following of the request but I knew in my heart that that request was really important and that I had to do it so just know that however practiced you are it's really human and really normal to have a big reaction to whatever this aspect wants us to know and you can negotiate if you're not ready to make a certain change or you feel that that's a certain request is unreasonable you can negotiate Starting the dialogue is the most important part. You don't have to get it all right today. But I invite you to play with this moving forward and to begin to really understand these different aspects of you that have probably been shut down or not listened to because you didn't necessarily have the tools before. Just notice, just gather this information and know that the part of you that's causing the issue isn't trying to upset you it's just trying its best to meet a need and it doesn't know how else to do it and this is how we're going to begin to change that narrative so keep going keep this this dialogue going today for as long as you can it might take a while to find that voice and that's totally okay you might choose to do it in a slightly different way 
but it will come. And moving forward, anytime you're feeling this way, you can use this method as often as you need with any feelings. I want to, as I finish today, I want to just acknowledge what an amazing thing you're doing for yourself. This is being willing to go deep, to feel these things, to acknowledge these things, takes immense courage, immense. You will look back at this work that you're doing now for yourself in the years to come and be like, wow, that was absolutely amazing. When we're struggling with things, we can often feel weak and that our struggle means that we're not handling things very well. But I hope that in the time to come, you'll look back and realise what immense courage this work took and that there are other people out there who couldn't do this, who couldn't face the difficult feelings and all those other things. You are one of a minority who are doing hard things and it will have incredible and positive outcomes not just for you but for all the people you come into contact with in the future happy journaling i'm harris eddie hill the founder of the center for childhood trauma healing and you can find more of my stuff at mxharrishill.com that's mxharrishill.com Wow, that was incredible. Did you get as much out of listening to that as I did in creating it? I hope you did. I hope you found it helpful and powerful, and I hope that it allowed you to take action and choose yourself today. If you found this to be helpful, please share this with someone who needs to hear this message as well, because we don't need to heal alone. Thank you so much for choosing yourself today and for listening. I'll see you next time.